Okay. So good evening, everyone. Welcome to the Vana Talk Show. This is our second web series, and uh, you all know me. I am the founder and director of Chrysanthemum Chronicles, earlier Prithora Blogazine, and today we have a very interesting guest with us. And I'll give you a short, brief intro about her. She's someone who doesn't feel a bit of qualm to raise her voice against the social issues going in the country. Especially her voice always finds volume when she sees atrocities towards women. Her subject of writings also remains the same and she has voiced her opinions through two of her fiction books and one poetry book. She is none other than Antara Banerjee. So I'm going to invite her and we are going to ask her many interesting questions today. So let's invite her. Hello, Hello Mona. Mona. Welcome to the how are you? I am fine. Uh, a very warm good evening to all of our viewers and to you. And thank you to Chrysanthemum Chronicles for inviting me. My pleasure. Of course, it's you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's the big child. But again, we are creating, you know, an entity. So it should be considered as a chrysanthemum chronicle right yes yes that is why i said chrysanthemum chronicles <laughs> first <laughs> okay so let me give a short intro about you antra Banerjee is a author poet speaker mentor design and customer marketing communication consultant she is an awardee of sunmark aprajita awards 2019 literary young achiever for outstanding contribution in literature an body of Uran Empowering Women Awards for Outstanding Contribution in Women-Centric Literature. She has been a speaker at Kala Ghora, AKLF Thai Rakshak Debates, Council Member, India-Canada Bilateral Business Council, WICCI, Chairperson, Public Relations and Communication, Rakshak Foundation, Kolkata, Ex-Honorary Secretary of Rotary Club of Calcutta Millennium. She, she wears many hats, as you can see. So, okay. Antara, we'll talk about your three books today. So, I'm all okay. excited to know about you as a writer, you more as a person. I know you are a very down to earth person, a very good friend. But let's uh, know you more as a writer and a poet. So, I'll ask Absolutely. you the first question. Okay. Um, okay. You are mainly a novelist, and you have two novels to your credit The Goddess mm -hmm. in Flesh and To Be a Woman. Tell me how and when you got these plots in your mind and decided to pen them down as your stories. Yeah, so uh, this was about uh, 94 or 95, when oh. I read a, a news uh, a report, you know, about a very gory and uh, brutal killing of a young woman by a tantric in, in some kind of tantric ritual. And at those times, you remember that uh, people did not talk about violence and all these things. It, it, yeah. was, it was not reported like that. Uh, like now we see violence and blood and gore everywhere. At that time, mm -hmm. it was not. It was kind of censored. It was, I mean, it, it was there, but it was subtly put to the public. Yeah. So at that time, it, the report was so vivid. The okay. girl's body was cut when she was alive, first okay. of all, assaulted sexually. And then uh, her body was cut part by part when she was alive. And That's then her, and, and then in the end, her throat was slit. So oh it had such a such a huge impact on me. I, I could not sleep for uh, several days and it <laughs> remained in my mind. Later on, when I was, uh, I, I mean, I did not uh, write anything about it at that time, but it did have an, a deep impact on me. Okay. Uh, later on, uh, when I was in London, I was all alone. Uh, and I think uh, isolation brings out the book in you. So okay. at that time, this plot came to me. I started writing about this. And... Okay. I, you never, you don't think that you're going to write a book. You just start writing. You That's keep true. writing your mind. And then it suddenly, you, you one day you know that it, it has become a book. Yeah. You know? So um, it turned out like that. 
and mm-hmm. uh, and since it had, had a, such a huge impact on me or i mean very early on mm-hmm. tantric rituals and tantra okay. uh, had uh, i mean i had a deep inquisitiveness about it at that time what is this religion what are these rituals that are so brutal and that are so secretive okay and 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 why would someone want to harm somebody in such yeah. a way you know, but uh, i mean you know, and and their rituals are also very bizarre yeah. so these things interested me very much and i i started um, studying uh, about tantra okay the, the so philosophy the aspect, as well as the the practical aspect so okay. the philosophical aspect you know do, do we have the time to go into it sorry do we have the time to go into it i yeah please please go ahead okay so uh, when you see the philosophical aspect of tantra mm-hmm. it is okay. it, it is very profound because yeah. uh, that says that uh, we should be embracing the entire uh, entirety of nature i mean uh, the good the bad and the ugly okay it says mm-hmm. that you you have to uh, be uh, receptive of the mm-hmm. beauty and the ugliness and the ferocity of nature in the same in the same uh, you know emotional and mental and uh, physical uh, level okay so uh, uh, after i would like to ask one thing like you are speaking this is sounding more like spiritual like a very positive kind of aspect of tantra tantrism yes. but what i have always uh, known i i'm not into it i always fear the uh, tantric and occult and everything but i've mm-hmm. seen that these things are always you know uh, emit kind of dark energy and they worship dark things and all i'm i'm so, coming to it i'm coming to it um historically if you see tantra uh, tantra has been uh, you know the the religion of okay. the early indians not even before the aryans it it, it was there and slowly uh, it, uh, it 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 rose as okay. as a, a, a parallel to the okay. sanatan hindu dharm okay. so you will see Uh, in tantra everything is opposite to what sanatan hindu dharm says or does or believes mm-hmm. so whatever is sacred in in hindu dharm okay is uh, is kind of negated in tantra you will see okay. that so uh, having meat having sex having uh, different kinds of um, uh, you know uh, we think that the dead is impure okay but they they are they are um, worship they have to eat uh, dead bodies they they eat dead bodies okay uh, you know but so these, these are part of the rituals yes they are uh, okay. I, 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 these things really sound weird Mm-hmm. so so if if you look at the philosophical aspect of tantra it says mm-hmm. that as you know you can relate now that it says that in the best of nature whatever looks beautiful to you smells good to you you have to be equally uh, receptive of the most vilest and the mm-hmm. most smelliest and then the most ugliest okay uh, as okay. much as you are receptive of the best best okay. that is, the that best is what philosophy on the, at the philosophical level it talks about you know mm-hmm. yeah but, but if you go to the practical side you mm-hmm. will see that they they are uh, they do ne- necromancy which is eating uh, dead flesh okay and uh, then they have bizarre sexual rituals with uh, with in ancestors actually and okay. they have ancestors rituals and also with their gurus and their um their uh, fellow uh, tantrics and who are these my question suddenly the question that arose in me that these are very uh, like sex is very uh, less talked about in our society and looked at as a taboo mm-hmm. and where do they get these women who are these women that they are they are doing practicing the uh, rituals with 
so that mm -hmm. made me go deeper into the practical side of okay. tantra and okay. there i found extreme exploitation of women hmm, that's so, not true yeah so in in there are different kinds of tantra there are different books sects of tantra and the most uh, dark sects they say they will prescribe tantra is not about uh, finding the truth or finding uh, find finding god or something it is about finding siddhis what is this okay. siddhi of having some kind of supernatural power okay. it is not about it is not about nirvana aapki soul ko shanti mil jaye aapko moksha mil jaye ye koi nahi hai it's not about that it is okay. about uh, you know achieving some kind of power it might be a dark power as well mostly like, i guess Tantras, because I don't yeah. see them. Like uh, people, those who are into tantrism and all, they stay away from the normal people in the crowd. And like mm -hmm. when once I went to Tarapit, I've seen mm -hmm. that there's a, a cremation ground ground where women can also enter. So I saw that. I was very mm -hmm. little at that time, so I didn't get the idea much. But I saw there was like agoris and sadhus and all, and they were yeah. you know literally having some drink and they were eating something. So they forbid uh, us from uh, to go there. So I, I have little memories of those place. I mean that place. Yeah, and and you will see them doing all things that are taboo. Mm -hmm. okay. they, they will be into addiction, extreme mm -hmm. addiction. Then okay. they 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 will be into necromancy. I mean, doing different things with dead bodies. Then they will have bizarre sex with different mm -hmm. kinds of women, even incestuous, you know, uh, practices. Mm -hmm. Actually, in in their books, th they have mentioned yeah. different kind of women. They have okay. mentioned different kind of women with whom you have uh, you do this tantric sadhana, basically. Okay. Uh, and and you get a certain kind of siddhi okay you know so mm -hmm. it is all about getting to the uh, to the truth whatever okay. truth they are trying to find hmm. or whatever you know power they are kind of trying to achieve through hmm. sexual union okay they think that there is a lot of power in that mm -hmm. And and therefrom actually start the okay. social ills. Mm -hmm. But in your so, story, uh, the first one you talk about Vama, that is another form of Kali you told earlier. Yes. So how does this thing relates with that? I mean, tantrism and all because goddess Kali, I know I have a slight idea that it can mm -hmm. you know lead to that dark thing and all. Yeah. So so basically, it is a. Uh, mm, about the outer uh, outcomes of tantric activity okay okay so vama's twin sister uma mm -hmm. goes mm -hmm. missing in a, a kali puja mela a diwali mela actually okay. and later on the next morning two headless corpses of women sexually assaulted and uh, you know uh, 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 there was evidence that uh, there was there was some ritual done on them okay which which were found floating in the river okay and you as you know twin twins are very attached to each other yeah so uh, vama is not able to take take it lightly she takes okay. it upon herself to get to the truth of vama's uh, of uma's death okay they cannot make out actually who, i mean who these uh, the dead bodies are okay because the head is not there yeah and that there is nothing else to identify but somewhere down in her heart at the bottom mm -hmm. of her heart she knows that probably she this could be vama or any woman and and okay. nobody will identify them as their yeah. own because that will bring shame to them it is a yeah. rural community it, my all my books and stories are are based uh, 
uh, in rural Bengal, though I have seen very little of it, but I don't know how. I, it's a kind of a calling, you know, that uh, yeah. I always write about rural uh, sections because I think that rural people face life in a very different way than mm. us. True, very true. Yeah, and, and, and to them, that uh, life is very real. Like mm. you, you may be sitting right here, I, I am sitting right here, and suddenly my bank goes bankrupt. And I am still sitting here in my cozy uh, living room. So that mm. is how our life is. That's we also true. have very big challenges. But it, it is remote, kind of remote. But yeah. the challenges they face are very on their face. Absolutely. So the and reactions are also right. very on their face. And we don't come to know of those only uh, through news and that too, even if we are interested to dig in, yeah. that's we know. Yeah, and, and that, that too is, is through the, the lens of law. Yeah. Law and natural justice are not the same thing. Yeah. You know, today, if somebody comes comes to attack you, you hmm. will ob obviously attack, I mean, resist, or, you know, you, you will try to push them off. You, you will also, you know, use some force. And suppose that person dies, you hmm. will die proving that you did not, you, that person yeah. came to attack you because that, that is all not recorded. Hmm, that's true. You will die proving that you are innocent. And that person was actually uh, the one who was assaulting. And you were only defending yourself. Yeah. So, so the eyes of law is very different from natural justice. Yeah, that's true. And 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 uh, when you uh, face life on your face, hmm. then you don't have the time to think. First of all, uh, the the underprivileged people don't know about laws. Mm -hmm. in, they know natural justice, what should be and what should not be. And they react like that. Yeah. It is only That's us, the the so-called educated, the urban, and then the people who know laws, mm -hmm. they will try to understand it in a different way. Oh, it's insane. Tha ki nahi tha. Oh, you know, it, was it uh, self-defense or not or whatever. But mm -hmm. then it is, it is a battle for survival. Yeah. So these are very two different attitudes towards life. And mm -hmm. that is that is what attracts me, I think, to the rural stories. OK. You know, the underprivileged when when you have no support, when you have mm -hmm. no understanding of how the, the, the complicated world works. But you mm -hmm. know that you have to live. Yeah, but you know that you you have to uh, you know go go by what you think is right, yeah. what is natural justice, which everybody understands. Mm -hmm. if, you, if you see someone trying to kill another one, what will you do? You will try to save that someone, yeah. and in the process, if if you uh, if uh, the murderer dies, the one who was trying to murder mm -hmm. dies, and then you will die proving that. I was trying to help. Yeah. First of all, you will be asked, uh, why, why did you try to help? He was not mm. attacking you. So you see, uh, and, and the way we see the world and the way the world actually is, yeah. is very different. Totally different. Yeah. So these, these, uh, this dichotomy, I, I try to portray this dichotomy everywhere mm -hmm. in my stories. Hmm. Yeah. Whatever is presented to us, ki this is the way it is. It might not be the way it is actually. Most of the time it is not. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. That is what that is the thing point I always want to prove in my stories. Okay, wow. So I have to read your books. That is the main thing. <laughs> I have to do that. Yeah, you're welcome. <laughs> <laughs> so okay, I'll go for the next question. Yeah. Uh, why you write choose to write the stories uh, in such a way that because I have always felt you portray mm -hmm. certain aggression towards this thing. I think you already answered that mm -hmm. the, 
society is being unjust to poor people and particularly women so i'll ask the next question and this is quite important because they've talked about this in second book and it has the more uh, elements of it you yeah. have talked about eunuchs in both of your novels as main characters so do you feel that yeah. this part of the society is still not treated fairly and you are trying to voice your opinion for them through your stories the second one of course of course yeah. they are not treated well even even uh, uh, you know our uh, legal uh, whatever legal uh, this um, things are basically uh, they are not defined for them okay. even even uh, the den gender hmm. the problem is they have an ambiguous yeah people, uh, who are so called normal so called mm -hmm. now biologically normal is a person who is who is a female and identifies as, as a female a male who identifies as a male we consider mm -hmm. that normal and yeah. natural mm -hmm. and anything beyond that is unnatural mm -hmm. that that is in our mind yeah everything is is in the nature okay everything uh exists inside nature but in our mind we have uh, segregated it and we we isolate it as unnatural and which is not right and hmm. not acceptable hmm. so there is the beginning of injustice towards them the okay. very thought the very thought we have towards the the attitude we have towards them so tell me Input, then have... comes that that there are various kinds of people hmm. we we just put them i mean uh, them under a, an umbrella thing nunax or transgender mm -hmm. a nunax as a and a transgender are not the same yeah there are two kinds of transgender people actually okay. uh, i can tell you mona uh mm -hmm. in our ancient scriptures in kama sutra we we just know kama sutra as as a book of you know sexual positions it's mm -hmm. not correct okay actually sage vatsayan he studied this very deeply and he has made classifications of these these genders which we we uh, consider unnatural there are several kinds now mm -hmm. now you must be seeing first it was it was lgbt then it was lgbtq now it is lgbtqi mm -hmm. so these, why are these getting added because now people are understanding that these are various kinds of people with different kinds of needs mm -hmm. you know okay. so this sensitivity Hmm. was not there and and they were not they uh, we were afraid of them first of all because we thought that these are unnatural i don't know what kind of creature this is creature we didn't even say thing that they are humans because hmm. they did not behave like us that is why we we thought that oh these people are uh, unacceptable these are i don't know what kind of creatures Mm -hmm. you know and other than just their um, you know private life they are just normal human beings like us yeah other than their their private lives yeah you know yeah. but we have segregated them we don't want to give them job very recently only uh, maybe a couple of years that they are able to write sex other otherwise it was always male or female yeah there was yeah. even in you know governmental uh, forms there okay. was there was no place for them mm -hmm. that's true you to identify them mm -hmm. so that is why that sensitivity is required and and who brings sensitivity you tell me yeah through our voices and of course through our writings yeah yeah the authors the poets who keep writing about these things they make the taboos normal they they bring it to the public see this hear this yeah. Yeah. understand mm. this be sensitive towards this. this is what we do yeah 
that's true but everybody who is not into this you know they don't have inclination towards this kind of writing so yours is different so that's why i wanted to know that uh, why you chose uh, what is the name of your character raghu or Ra well, raghu forget. raghu but uh, his his uh, boyfriend you can say because raghu identifies as a woman okay but he was a man he earlier Ah uh, yeah, or, uh, not earlier. He, he is the by yeah. body. He's a he's a male. There is no aberration in his body. Okay. You know, I let me give you a small understanding into this. Yeah, uh, sure. Yuna is a person who mm -hmm. this is a very rare occurrence in nature. A mm -hmm. uh, Yuna is a person who has an ambiguous gender. Okay. Their private parts are different kind. Hmm. Okay, but if you look at a transgender, is a person who has a perfect body, but okay. identifies with the opposite gender. Okay. So these are not the same. A eunuch hmm. and a transgender are quite different. Okay, you know. So uh, my protagonist is a. transgender later on he becomes transgender basically transgender means someone who has transferred his uh, his or her gender okay yeah so uh, raghu has a perfect male body and but he identifies as a woman okay. and and being an actor of jatra you know jatra right the theater yeah. the, the yes, folk okay. theater of of bengal well, yeah, yeah. so there he he always plays the goddess okay you must be knowing that shitala pala ma monosha pala and yes, the, yes. these things happen in the rural uh, places so yes. uh, he is uh, an actor in okay. such a jatra hmm and uh, first of all playing a woman and okay. then playing a divine woman after mm -hmm. after jatras you mm. will see that once the, once the, the jatra ends you will mm. see the, the person playing the goddess will sit down on a, in a place and all the audience they will come one by one and touch their feet okay you know so mm. at that time i mean once a person gets used to this they mm. identify with the feminine and also they identify with the divine feminine okay they think that they are goddess hmm so that thing actually gets into his mind hmm. and he wants to be identified as that okay so all the travails in his life all the sacrifices are done towards that okay. to be accepted as a woman that is why the the book is called to be a woman what he has to do to be a woman yeah okay yeah But the cover page is also quite interesting. So you actually took a photograph of uh, a person like that, transgender. Yes, or something. yes. Actually, it's up somewhere down the road. You know, there is there is a tea stall, and I used to see this guy over there. He had quite long hair and and quite thick hair. You know, not like me. I'm all almost almost balding. I'm <laughs> going through that phase. <laughs> so that guy had had thick long beautiful hair actually and okay. i whenever i passed i most of the time i saw that he is he is uh, you know drying his hair in the in the sun he is roaming on on the uh, street and he's drying his hair and this he happened looked where? in the city this happened where Indokata, i mean where? Indokata, just here just yes, just uh, down down the road Okay. So I used to see this guy, and suddenly, when when this uh, when I wrote the book and I was about to publish it, okay. uh, when I thought of the cover, I thought of him actually, and I I I approached him, okay. and I said that uh, can I dress you up as a woman if you don't okay. mind? So he was okay with it. So I and my friend uh, we went to okay. his house. I spent about a couple of hours. Um, you know dressing him up and making up his face i took my all my uh, <laughs> cosmetics and my sarees and all and jewelry okay. i decked him up and then i took a photo of him as you uh, you might not be knowing uh, mona that i am also a photographer uh, by qualification no. <laughs> <Amazing>. yeah. <laughs> yeah so uh, 
I photographed him, okay. and uh, yeah, he was he was quite accepting of it, and he was very happy with the photos. <laughs> Okay, yeah, it really yeah. looks realistic. That's why I asked because uh, if you go for you know in internet, you don't get that kind of image. It was really, uh, I mean, quite connecting. You feel whatever the content I just go went through the synopsis, I could yeah. feel that. Yeah, so, so, uh, uh, yeah. Uh, in in uh, now this uh, protagonist actually is invited to be the living goddess in a okay. temple. Which is okay. which is uh, you know practically business hmm. to have a living goddess in your uh, temple. Yeah, and he was glad because he wanted to be the divine and feminine. So hmm. both he was he was getting it on a platter, but he would actually be under house arrest because a god cannot be a goddess cannot be roaming around people. So he would yeah. be locked uh, up in yeah, the basement yeah. of the temple. Okay. I think I'm giving out the story too much. <laughs> but you should tell that your books are available where because whenever I try to find them, I don't get it. It's always like out of stock. Are they not available in Amazon? Right now, they are not, uh, unfortunately. So you'll okay. have to contact me. <laughs> you'll have to tell me. I'll, I'll send it to you. <laughs> okay, sure. So uh, do you have the book? I think you should read something uh, if you want to. Yeah, I have the book. I will. I will actually. Uh, let me give you a, a, an introduction of this dream that he gets, yeah. uh, because uh, there there is uh, one place in the story where uh, people start uh, being suspicious of him. Okay. Because uh, people start talking that he is not a woman. Also, how can this be a goddess? Mm -hmm. You know, sounds uh, real. Yeah. So at that time, uh, this guy gets gets scary dreams. He doesn't know how to react okay. because he he actually believes that he is a, a divine goddess. And and the temple authorities they they are uh, taking advantage mm -hmm. of his uh, you know vulnerability. Oh. And when and they say that okay. there has to be an operation for removing his, uh, you know, changing his uh, uh, gender. So okay. that is when he gets this dream. I'll I'll just read it out to you. It, it's a little bit scary. <laughs> okay. I'll just try to find it. Oh, it's difficult to find now. <laughs> it's, it's a bit difficult to find. Okay, no worries. You can uh, read from it later. Till then, we can take a, a, another question if you want. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll try okay. to. I'll try to find it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Never mind. I, I'll take the next question. Okay. <laughs> Oh, um, okay. So I often feel that you have a certain rage in you towards all the crimes and atrocity happening towards women. And your stories are more into that direction. So did you ever feel that your writings could create some sort of bias or can lead you to be misjudged as a writer by people? Did this thought ever come to your mind by writing? <laughs> it, it is not a thought. It is a reality. It is a reality, Mona, because uh, you cannot please everybody. Forget That's about true. writing. Even, even in a normal life, even mm -hmm. if you are the most obedient and most docile, you will still see that people are displeased with you and they are misjudging you. 
So, um, and especially when you are a writer, yeah. uh, you cannot care about these things. <laughs> so basically, yeah. if, if, even if I know, I ignore. <laughs> Because uh, I I don't write for the market. I I don't write for the market. Mm. Actually, uh, early on, when uh, my first story Vama mm. was coming up, I was told by someone that why don't you oh. visit a bookstore and see what are the best selling books, and uh, and then mm. uh, you write about uh, uh, write that kind of stories. I said I'll never do that. You know, I got I got yeah. a little bit angry <laughs> uh, because uh, uh, yeah, because uh, I am not writing to please a market. I have a calling. I, I don't write as as a professional writer. First of all, I write because I have something to say. I have a story to tell. Mm. So, but you're right. I've read some of your work and I feel that you are a very good writer. Thank you yeah. so much. So uh, when I was told about the market and you should uh, follow the market trends and all, I said never. Even if mm -hmm. one one person reads this and and is uh, and relates with it and mm -hmm. is excited about it, that's good mm -hmm. enough for me. Mm -hmm. I I wouldn't want uh, to please everybody. Yes. And and especially the subjects that I write uh, write mm. about, most of them are taboo subjects. Yeah, that's true. you know uh, it, it's it's uh, no it's not explicitly I I don't write vividly about sex, mm -hmm. so you won't find a titillation, but you mm. will certain uh, certainly see that the sexual crimes, the discriminations, mm -hmm. the exploitation mm -hmm. that ha happen on that yeah. ground. I am very, very vocal about them. Yeah, that's true. So you don't fear the society. That's good. And it's, this is also good that you are not writing, uh, thinking as you are marketing your book. You should write right. what, what soothes you, what satisfies you. That should be a, a writer's. I mean, uh, I, I can say that every writer should do that because many writers uh, feel that what is uh, trending, they should write that. But mm -hmm. honestly, uh, if I have to say, I feel uh, what you are comfortable writing in, what gives you the most satisfaction, that is good to write. And you, yeah, you, you will, you will find, you know, uh, the best. It's not that suddenly after after college, after graduation in in literature, I think that I will start now start being an author or or a poet. It doesn't happen like that. Yeah. That. A story comes to you. A story chooses you. You don't choose a story. This is you true. don't choose a genre. Mm -hmm. That genre chooses you. Yeah. You know, a, 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 a very dear friend of mine. She invited me to uh, give a submission on humor uh, on a humor anthology. I I just cannot write humor. Okay. <laughs> yeah. So I, I I am not a very a very versatile person in in terms of um, writing. When when I feel that you know fire within me, only then I can write. And then uh, let me share a secret with you. Uh, these challenges okay. that happen, you know, every every day a prompt comes, and then then we write about it. I I participated in one, and then. Mm, somewhere down the line, I felt that I'm not doing justice to myself. There mm. are very talented people who who can, you know, write a poem satisfactorily uh, within a, a day. Yeah. You know, like you, you must be knowing that there are there are months or weeks where where mm -hmm. uh, every day a prompt comes and then you have to write. Yeah. Uh, I. But there's one, one, uh, and, one uh, prom and, going you now in Chrysanthemum. Have you seen that? That could <laughs> yeah, be I have. I have. There are there are very very talented people who can do that, Mona. But um, I I am utterly unable to do that because but, uh, I, 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 I I I start living in that. You know, uh, I I cannot uh, do justice to it. I I feel that I have uh, you know served a. Uh, uh, a uh, half baked food uh, to my audience. Okay.
Yeah. And it's okay because until and unless you don't feel that kind of kick coming from your inside, you want to write mm -hmm. on that subject, you should not. Because yeah. even it happens with me, I, I always, you can call me a very whimsical writer, you know. <laughs> <laughs> Same here. Because I also cannot, you know, write in a day or something, a poem, a poem comes in my mind and it will keep on brewing and brewing. And after like a month or so, I'll write it down until and unless I feel like I have done justice to it then only I'm like, I post it. So I'm Absolutely. also very poor in that case. So I'm with you. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yeah. So, so you yeah. understand me. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. So I'm good with creating prompts when it comes to creating them. But when it comes to writing, I also have to take a lot of time. Yeah, I, I really admire people who can do that. Yeah, I do. So. I really admire, and, and and people come up with such beautiful writings yes. and such yes. poems. Are, uh, that why I, these I have to cook for a long time. <laughs> Very true. I I am handicapped in that way. You can say. <laughs> Absolutely, I can understand. So uh, let's talk about your th uh, poetry book. That's your third book, mm -hmm. right? So it's called yes, Pieces yes. of a Tormented Mind. Uh, because fiction, I know you choose more of women and society and other social issues as your subjects. What is the mm -hmm. subject of your poems in this book? So give us some details about it. Now, the name, the title itself is quite intriguing. Pieces of a Tormented Mind. Why did you choose this title? Uh, actually, you know, uh, as, I, as I told you, uh, I, I cannot write on demand. Uh, okay. I write when there is, my mind is tormented. Okay. I write best when my I my mind is tormented by a thought, and and it keeps coming back to me, and and uh, you know bothers me so much that mm. I have to. I am compelled to write. Okay. So uh, that is why it is pieces of a tormented mind. There are many things that mm. actually pain me and torment me. Mm -hmm. And and I feel I I, I feel uh, uh, you know that I have to write about it, so that is why it is pieces of a tormented mind. And the beauty of uh, poetry is I I am not a student of literature. I am a student of a very uh, dry subject called political science. <laughs> okay. So, um, uh, I I did not study poetry as such. Though I appreciate uh, poetry, but uh, I do not study uh, literature as such. Um, but uh, you might find a lot of faults uh, in, in that way. I mean, if you look at technical technical poetry. Okay. But what the one thing that, that appeals to me about poetry is you can write about a profound thing in mm -hmm. a very short, um, short. space. Yes, and and yes. a very effective way of communication. I I, I am a professional uh, um, of communication, and also uh, I am very interested in in communication as such. You know, as, as a subject. So mm -hmm. I feel that that uh, poetry is a very very powerful uh, means of communication. Yeah. When, even when you see, you know, these um, protests and all these happen, there is mm -hmm. always poetry that goes with it. And poetry becomes mm -hmm. their anthem. Uh, yeah. You must true. also be knowing that, that before we had script, we mm -hmm. had the oral tradition of poetry before pro mm -hmm. prose. Poetry came before prose. Now people say, people say that oh, I can I can read uh, fiction, but I don't understand poetry. Mm -hmm. It's 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 absolute nonsense. I tell you, because <laughs> you know uh, we started humankind started with poetry, well, yeah. orally, mm -hmm. because it, it was easier to remember if mm -hmm. if it has rhythm and rhyme, mm -hmm. and and a big thing could be told in a very pithy short form. And in a way, so that is why, yes. So that is that is why I started exploring poetry, and okay. uh, you you can call it that that I I have dared to get into poetry. Okay. So you started as a fiction writer, and then you started poetry, right? Yes. Yes. Absolutely. 
but your poems are very profound and quite intense if i have to say and i Thank still you. remember that live performance you did on a which character of some ramayan i guess sita yes right? so it was yes. so effective and so uh, soul stirring i had goosebumps while i was listening to you oh. your rendition was so effective i have to say that so i think you should read a poem from your book sure if you are uh, i i will tell you a little about it because uh, mm. my book is so so actually uh, show your books to the screen so that people can know what are your books and the cover page yeah should... this is my uh, book of poems it is called pieces of a tormented mind okay and it it has two sections one okay. is romantic and rebel okay. though they sound very contradictory but okay. there is nothing contradictory about it <laughs> oh, wow. because only when you are romantic you can be a rebel mm -hmm. that's and true unless you are passionate about something you cannot become a rebel Hmm. Yeah. So romance, yeah. romance has to have that that eccentricness, that uh, eccentricity, uh, hmm. and and uh, that rebelliousness. Hmm. Hmm. That's very true. So I will read a poem which is uh, as as you call me like I I am I have some rage, so <laughs> I will uh, read. A poem yeah. with rage. Sure, go <laughs> ahead, please. And uh, you know, um, divinity comes a lot in most of my works. You will see I'm challenging divinity. I'm challenging faith. I'm challenging religion. Hmm. Because it's it's a basis of our life. The yeah. way human human society is constructed, mm -hmm. uh, religion is a very very strong part of it. Uh, not only uh, spiritually, but also yeah. our uh, daily lives are mm -hmm. driven by religion. What you can do, what you cannot do. Today you yeah. cannot do this. Today you cannot wear that. There you cannot wear this. So everything. Is driven yeah. by some kind of religious sanction. Religious yeah. If if you have to uh, question something, religion comes in between. Mm -hmm. You you like, will see, you you will see anything that you, that that you see uh, discrimination and exploitation or anything. Somewhere yeah. you will see it is connected to religion, because and religion it, is. Like these days, it is yes. in their view because every religion would come and start pointing the their views, and then every you know chaos happens. This is what we are witnessing nowadays. That's true. Yes, absolutely, absolutely. So uh, you will see religion coming up uh, in all my poems, uh, mm -hmm. which are rebellious. Okay. Romance may still be religion ko pardon kiya ja sakta hai, not in rebel. <laughs> <laughs> there are small small uh, you know uh, passages that i have taken from lorca uh, as if i am having a discussion with lorca he is uh, reading a part of his uh, poem and okay. i am replying to it okay uh as i told you i am not a student of literature but ye kahi nahi likha hai ki if you uh, you can read poetry or uh, you know fiction if only if you are a student of literature so even if you are not a student of literature and, and you don't know the context you can still mm -hmm. enjoy the poetry through your interpretation of whatever yeah. the words yeah. words have yeah. been put together so that That's is how i read I read the uh, poems. Okay. You know. Sure. So uh, here, yes. So here, I uh, I'm taking an excerpt. Hmm. So Lorca in the Gachela of Dark Death says, "I don't want to hear again that the dead do not lose blood." Okay. that the putrid mouth 
goes on asking for water. I don't want to learn of the torches of the grass, nor of the moon with a serpent's mouth, the labors before dawn. I say, I would close my book of fairy tales. Now I'm coming to your genre. <laughs> sure. I would close my book of fairy tales. See no evil, hear no evil, do no evil. But the Holocaust is not a thing of the past. Corpses pile up for mass graves. Artillery, artillery still fresh for fire. Okay. Young lives still to be sacrificed. The Red Sea is not red enough yet. So let the bloodbath continue. Mm -hmm. The Dead Sea is not dead enough. So stifle my voice, lest I begin to babble of sunshine and butterflies, of sugar and spice, and all that's nice. Mm -hmm. Nice, very nice. So, yeah, I want to say that uh, you know we can we can write romantic things and you know beautiful things, but at the mm -hmm. end of the day, the world is still a very cruel place, and it is kept cruel by vested interests. Mm -hmm. So that, that is what uh, here uh, I am trying to say. Mm -hmm. Again, in the city that does not sleep, Lorca mm -hmm. contends. Nobody is sleeping under the sky. Nobody, nobody, nobody is sleep, sleeping. If someone does close his eyes, a whip, boys, a whip. Let there be a landscape of open eyes and bitter wounds on fire. No one is sleeping in this in this world. No one, no one. Mm -hmm. To this I say, I preserve my brain and formalin, for they burn the library of Baghdad. Okay, what would stop them from gagging mm -hmm. my words and start arson with the burning pages of my poetry? Mm -hmm. The city that never sleeps glues its eyes to newer and more novel deeds of brutality and wishes away sleep, lest nightmares catches them unawares. And my brain resurrects itself to recall all the lost poetry. Wow. Very nice. So you so really have the remedy. <laughs> You have a great symbolic elements all in your poems and profound, as I can always say. So you have a very you know, uh, intense and it affects your mind. Whenever I hear you or read your poems and hear you, it always affects me in a very strange and certain way that uh, that stays with me. <laughs> <laughs> uh, on a lighter note, I will um, actually read a romantic poem to you, and you will see <laughs> that uh, uh, romance uh, is uh, looks a little bit, you know, uh, after after what we have discussed in the rebel section, romance will look a little bit diluted. Okay, because. Sure. Uh, I, I, I don't know if this has happened to you, Mona. Uh, yeah. After, you know, you start with romantic things and then yeah. you, uh, you know, you uh, portray your personal emotions, your personal pains and happiness and what you like and everything, uh, your, your idea of romance. But yeah. as you mature as a writer, yeah. you will see that you are writing less about yourself and more about the society. Yeah. You know, sure. you, you you will see that, that when you mature, you, you mm -hmm. will go to that stage. So I think uh, I have graduated from there and went went into that uh, that that place <laughs> where where I find that now uh, my pain is so small and mm -hmm. my personal uh, you know suffering is nothing in front of what the world is suffering. So. Yeah. I even, uh, you know, uh, feel very ashamed to uh, put up my my uh, poems of uh, romance 
when when there is a protest going on when there their children are dying out there so uh, now i i have you, you know my brain is always uh, uh, you know catching the pain and uh, the 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 injustices all the time so i i have moved out of france a little bit i can say that yeah anyway that is still yeah oh. No, no. I, you uh, can first read that poem, then I'll ask you. I think we should listen to your romantic poem first. And I am a diehard romantic. Uh, I can tell you, I can okay. be very, very romantic, though I don't look like that. <laughs> <laughs> well, we all are romantic somewhere, but then at the end of the day, we have to face reality. So that yeah, is that's true. That's, yeah. So. So this uh, uh, poem uh, is called Price. Price, okay. I ground myself to dust in the crushing mill of unrelenting love. Dew myself to wind in your quest. I trusted like a child, entrusting itself to life. Waited as though death would never come. I broke the goblet of my brimming heart many times over. Slashed my dreams to keep awake for you. Whispered your name into the ears of the wind. Called out to you at the dead of my sleepless night. What did you do, my love? What price did you pay? Wow. Very nice. <laughs> demanding. <laughs> I'm always demanding something. Okay. If I love you, then you have to love me back. <laughs> That's a fair point. <laughs> you give yeah. and you take. That's absolutely. <laughs> so and, and, you know there is this interesting uh, poem. You'll always see we write about you. Hmm. Especially in poetry, you'll see hmm. we are writing about you. Okay. Now, I I so suddenly one day I was wondering who is this you? Who is this you? I was about to ask you that who is this you in your poem because I'm uh, I'm I don't know I, I'm getting more personal, but I've never known your better half. So <laughs> yeah. This you, this you does doesn't have anything to do with my better half. It, it, okay. At different times, this you changes. <laughs> with seasons, the yes, exactly. Okay. <laughs> so, uh, thinking that who is this you? You must uh, tell me that. What did you find as an answer? And at the end of the poem. I, I am afraid that you will remain more confused than ever. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely true. So yeah. this is called Half Truths. Okay. Who is this you who appears in my poetry so often? Hmm. Is it really you or someone I imagine in your guise? Hmm. Or is it a stranger to whom I write in such earnest passion? Okay. This you whom I desire, love, invoke, is it really you? My hands tremor with a benumbing ammer. Lips tremble as each word passes through the fer fervent quill. They spread themselves abundant on the inviting chest of the papyrus, revealing themselves to the gaze of the hungry reader. There are no answers still. It is a shadowing trail. Sometimes it is you, you and no one else. Sometimes a shadow or someone like you, a masked imposter, a rogue mm -hmm. indeed. <laughs> Ask me not to swear by anything. Poets yes. are prone to liberties, you know. Hmm. Alternate reality, a parallel universe. They are easily led astray. They lead astray too. 
for they remain in denial forever. Never admit that they live in half truths. Amazing. So you don't reveal the identity of that you, and you have created more questions for that particular you. Yes. <laughs> As I told you, you'll you'll you know at the end of the poem you'll be more confused. <laughs> Absolutely confused. <laughs> <It's> nice. <laughs> <laughs> so um, few people are joining us and Sakina she is saying that your poem is wonderful and Nisha is Thank also you. joining Hello. and Vijay is saying hi. Uh, I think hi. Vijay... <laughs> okay so Antra uh, I want to ask you one thing that uh, many people believe that whenever you are writing fiction some part of you goes into the writing it is either your uh, experience what you have seen, observed in society, or something that you have faced. So fiction was never really created. This is what many people believe, because part of a writer will always be there. So do you agree to that? And uh, will, would you say that your fiction books are actually fiction? You, it doesn't have any of your uh, you know, uh, shadow or the part of or your elements into it. What would you say? Uh, I would say yes and no. Okay. Because early on in, in the interview, I, I, I said that the story chooses you, you don't choose the story. Yeah. That so the story, individuality comes into you. Hmm. You live the story. Hmm. And only then you can write convincingly. In, okay. in my earlier interviews with you as well, I have, I, I have spoken about this. That hmm. you stand in front of the mirror. Mm -hmm. and behave like the characters okay only then you can write a convincing character every character has a different attitude a, a different uh, a mannerism a mm -hmm. different kind of language your mm -hmm. language is not the same as mine i you might be using uh, different words than i do mm -hmm. though we are both talking uh, talking in english Hmm. But you might be using uh, uh, different yeah. words frequently, which I wouldn't, hmm. and vice hmm. versa. So uh, uh, the characters use hmm. their own kind of language, their own kind of sophistication or unsophistication, I would say. Hmm. So uh, you cannot bring yourself into fiction. Okay. Otherwise, all your characters will look like you. Mm -hmm. I, I don't know. Uh, this is a blasphemous things, thing to say. Like uh, Salman Khan and Shah Rukh Khan, they play themselves in all their roles. Yeah, absolutely true. So, so they don't really play the character. They play mm -hmm. themselves a superstar. Mm -hmm. They are always like the superstar. The same I kind of mannerism and, okay. and the same kind of dialogues, the same kind of look, uh, however they look, and then, and then the... Uh, spreading of their hands, etc. Uh, that comes everywhere. Yeah. You know? and so they are not really playing the character, they are playing themselves mm -hmm. in each character. So the character is never built up. That is why that there is a there is a demarcation between mm -hmm. character actors and superstars and megastars. Mm -hmm. Okay. There there are very few actors who can straddle both the mm -hmm. the areas. So similarly, uh, a, a writer has okay. to live uh, his or her characters. If if they bring themselves into the story, the yeah. story gets diluted because they are not writing about themselves. They are mm -hmm. writing about that context. Mm -hmm. They are writing about those characters who are in the context. Mm -hmm. You are not you are just an observer you are like a reporter of what is going on hmm. yeah that's true yes. so uh, some people also choose to write from the angle of a narrator and some people write from the angle of the character itself right mm -hmm. so uh, which one do you think is more effective as a fiction writer because uh, i've read some books where sometimes it's get confusing because the writer is using somewhere uh, himself as the narrator and suddenly he the, goes into the character's voice so doesn't this mm -hmm. create you know, a kind of confusion and all so what do you think that which is the best way to 
I'm asking this because there would be many aspiring writers who would love to write fiction. So I thought mm -hmm. you could guide them also as you are a fiction writer. Yeah, uh, like the tenses, you know. Mm -hmm. so, suppose you start writing, I was going to the market and mm -hmm. uh, I, I reached the market and then I went to this shop and suddenly mm -hmm. I am buying mangoes. Mm -hmm. So, so the, 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 the image that was building up just breaks. Was mm -hmm. it in the past tense or is it in the present tense? Mm -hmm. What should I think? So you, mm -hmm. you are jumbling the reader's mind. Yeah. Similarly, books and similarly if, you, yeah. if you change the narrator, mm -hmm. it creates a problem. Yeah. Okay. It's fine to write as a narrator. Uh, like I am telling my own story. That's mm -hmm. fine. You, I mean, you don't have to be the writer. You know, okay. you, you are the character who is mm -hmm. writing his own story. Yeah. I think yeah. that is effective and it reaches well to the reader. Yeah, I, I wouldn't say that, Mona, because uh, uh, there are no generalizations like that. Uh, sometimes, mm -hmm. uh, you know, especially if you see the detective stories, mm -hmm. you will always see the Watson who is mm -hmm. writing the story. Yeah. Just to be, uh, you know, uh, just to bring out the uh, glory of the detective. If the detective mm -hmm. himself writes the story, if Sherlock Holmes writes the story, what happens? Mm -hmm. He won't be able to say that, oh, I see how, how intelligent I am. Oh, see how, mm -hmm. how perfectly I, I you know, uh, solved the mystery. Yeah. He won't be able to say that. But Watson, if he writes in the uh, voice of Watson, mm -hmm. what Watson can, uh, you know, wonder, wow, what a great uh, detective Sherlock is. Hmm. So, uh, so we should not be generalizing. It all yeah. depends on uh, what you are writing, uh, what, um, the subject and the characters and um, the story that you are trying to tell. Yeah, right. Yeah. So that's a very good insight you have given. I think it will help many fiction writers. And mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, because uh, nowadays, uh, since a chrysanthemum has turned into a publishing house, I am getting mm -hmm. some questions and queries. So this thing, uh, you know, uh, felt, I felt that I can ask you these questions and it would reach those people who want to know. So uh, one last question we are with, and I'll ask you that uh, if there, what would you like to say to those asp aspiring writers? We just discussed it, but it's a bit more elaboration of it. That mm -hmm. how to develop the characters and make the story flow because often I hear people that they said that while uh, they create the plot in their mind, but when it comes to characterization, they get you no know, befuzzled that uh, how should they proceed further? How should they think from the shoe of a character? So these mm -hmm. kind of uh, things uh, happen with writers. So how did you do? Because sometimes you, you find in a novel that there are many characters you have to mm -hmm. play with, you have to think from their shoe, you have to weave the story with them, you have to feel mm -hmm. their uh, emotions. Mm -hmm. so, how would you... so first of all, I would say that uh, whenever you are writing the story, maybe you have the plot in your mind or maybe mm -hmm. it is still building up and you are writing, you know, as it is building up. There are many ways of writing a book. It's not necessary that you have the entire story in your mind and the entire detailed plot you have in your mind and then you start writing. It doesn't happen like that. At least yeah. in my case, it doesn't happen. I mm. I suddenly get this urge to write mm. that there is a very strong, uh, uh, you know, maybe paragraph that is coming into my mind with a certain mm. character. I, I can see that character that character materializes in front of me and I mm. start writing. Mm. Now, how do I proceed? <clears throat> After that, I am building the story. So okay. the biggest thing about a convincing story is to be convinced about it yourself. Mm. Yeah. Before you tell it to the world, tell it to yourself. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Only then you can, uh, you can make a, uh, a convincing, uh, uh, you know, pr you can proceed convincingly. Mm -hmm. Because yeah. uh, 
uh, suppose you are writing about something about mm. a character you are building that character and okay. suddenly you make the character do something which is mm. very uncharacteristic of him okay so if you don't give the mm. context in what, what made that character do an uncharacteristic thing okay then you are shattering the image that you created about your character in your reader's mind mm -hmm. true and then the reader will immediately you, a reader does not have to be a no, novel uh, nobel laureate to understand mm -hmm. that you are a good writer or a bad writer mm -hmm. you know yes. doesn't have to be a professor of english to mm -hmm. understand if you are a good writer or bad writer either mm -hmm. i am convinced or i am not convinced and yeah. how to convince the writer hmm. how to convince the writer is you have to take a string and never let it break hmm yeah everything every dot has to be connected hmm yeah you this cannot is true. leave a string and then you start another string you cannot no. do that maybe hmm. you you are talking about two places or two mm. time two different you know uh, pieces of uh, events or two mm. different characters in do two different places that's fine mm. but in each place each mm. character has mm. to flow in one uh, line mm, yeah yeah that's If true you suddenly do something and jump into some, somewhere where there there is no context context mm. has to be built up and hmm. the and the character has to behave in their characteristic way mm -hmm. otherwise your story falls apart mm -hmm. and and that uh, you know has to be in their manner in the way they dress in the way mm -hmm. they talk in the language they use in the yeah. mannerisms that they use mm -hmm. yeah very you true know? so that is why i told you that uh, it's very important to act out your characters in front of the mirror mm -hmm. one psychological thing that you have to understand is human mind processes words in images yeah we understand things in things in images so if we break that image that mm -hmm. is building up in the reader's mind okay true then we will never be able to convince the reader hmm you know when when you through your story your your there is there is a blurred image first when the mm -hmm. reader is starting to read mm -hmm. and then slowly like a re reader uh, i mean a, a character is far away when you are starting mm -hmm. to read, slowly you are going closer to the character and seeing the details of of the character mm -hmm. True. it is materializing in front of you his eyes nose mouth uh, yeah. the way they are moving their hands and talking the language everything it yeah. slowly that image builds up don't do anything that shatters mm -hmm. that, that image okay and this this is a danger and a beauty of writing yeah when if you look at a comic book hmm your character is very well defined over there yeah it is according to the uh, the illustrator who is illustrating yeah and illustrations work so really is, yeah so there is there is nothing for you to imagine mm -hmm. so even if, you close your eyes, even if mm -hmm. you close your eyes you will see the character as they have been made mm -hmm. but if you, if you read a book which has no illustration Hmm. or does not give you any any uh, visual representation hmm. of hmm. its characters yeah it lets your imagination uh, go wild hmm. <laughs> that's you true you can go anywhere in the universe absolutely if you are looking for like a hero suppose we are looking to talk about a hero <laughs> so uh, this hero we can imagine the the kind of man we like hmm right so the, the if if uh, we like a clean shaven man so we hmm. will start imagining the hero as a clean shaven man yeah, yeah but suddenly at the end of the novel if we hear that he has been having this beard for years 
<laughs> your entire uh, you know thing goes for a toss oh nahi 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 ye kaise ho sakta hai <laughs> that was a cool stereotypical kind of feel to it yes. and uh, yeah. ha th- this was just a joke but you know so uh, this is how characters are built hmm. you have to be extremely careful hmm like uh, you have a uh, an image of a person of a real person hmm you have a, an image of that person uh, that the that person's character in your mind and suddenly mm-hmm. if you see that that person is doing something very uncharacteristic something that they they have never done mm-hmm. how how will you feel mm-hmm. you you will feel very disheartened so, you yeah. will feel pain मिसलीड कहीं दिन मैंने गलत ही समझा। I could not recognize this person. This is how you are going to feel. And and sure. suddenly there there will be a disconnect. Hmm hmm. You know. So uh, uh, this should not happen with your story. Hmm. Right. This is my advice that everything that you uh, that you describe the the circumstances the mm-hmm. the surroundings everything yes. that you build up be mm-hmm. consistent with that mm-hmm. right, be very right. consistent with what you are and and when you are developing mm-hmm. don't just from here just take it there because mm-hmm. uh, in your mind you have traveled this mm-hmm. you have traveled that much but mm-hmm. you were here and suddenly in the next page you are there mm, that was good your mind you have traveled but mm. you have not transferred that journey to yes. the reader mm. suddenly the reader is here and suddenly you expect him to be here Very cannot nice. that will not happen hm there will be a disconnect and mm. to get disconnected mm. from a reader is finished the writer <laughs> yeah that's true so that's a very very great advice i think many writers would be those who are starting their fiction book or want to write it it would really help them and uh, uh one last thing i would love to know from you that uh, recently i noticed that you have uh, started this collaborative project i guess uh, patrani so yeah. i think you could tell more about it because it's this is something really intriguing because uh, when sir when i uh, sorry when i went to calcutta kolkata it, but i love to call it calcutta so mm-hmm. i uh, witnessed few trams there we traveled and when uh, we were traveling the the tt whatever he is known as he was t- mm-hmm. telling that uh, these trams would be you know they they are, they are shutting this service because it's like they are finding it difficult so when i saw that you were tra- you were transforming this tram into something like this patrani so it was really good to see that so tell me more about it what this thing was all about and how did you start this uh my friend has this foundation called raksha foundation and uh, she and i uh, work very closely mm-hmm. uh, on a day to day basis we are the we two women two friends are the ones who are sitting down and ideating and uh, you know fleshing out the projects and uh, doing the things um, okay. she she is uh, she really has very good vision okay she knows what what she has a pulse on on i mean a, a finger on the pulse of people what will mm-hmm. click what will okay. interest people mm-hmm. and and with a social angle to it mm mm-hmm. always uh, reviving something or reforming something uh, mm. that is what her aim is and uh, i i don't know how sud- uh, suddenly uh, we mm. we did not meet years ago it was it, it was just maybe 5 6 years ago but the way we connect is like we have been uh, you know friends from childhood so mm. i understand her she understands me and mm. uh, you know uh, there there is a wonderful synergy between us and wow. and this this ethos that we have about uh, revival and reformation revival as in you know the things that are becoming obsolete for some reason mm-hmm. we want to revive them the good things that are becoming obsolete a tram mm-hmm. is a slow moving vehicle it will yeah. not work as a transport in daily life 
And if we still want to keep it, what to do? You know, okay. so that that is how Patrani came to our mind. So you had to take <clears throat> special permissions, I guess, because uh, you have yes. transformed it completely into a different kind of thing. Yes, absolutely. WBTC was very, very kind uh, okay. to help us uh, okay. with this uh, project. And mm -hmm. <clears throat> they gave, gave us all cooperation and all permissions to uh, do up the tram with jute. And th these jute um, products, are made by prisoners, oh, wow. prison inmates, trained okay. prison inmates. We have mm -hmm. been working in the correctional homes for uh, maybe last five years. So, mm -hmm. so you know, everything uh, is about revival, revival of the tram, revival mm -hmm. of the heritage of Kolkata, and mm -hmm. uh, revival of jute. Jute is also supposed to be uh, co constituting a yeah. uh, dyeing industry. Mm -hmm. True. O over there also reviving so many things and yeah. reformation reformation of the inmates mm -hmm. to change uh, their attitude to do mm -hmm. uh, bring them into a constructive path and not only uh, reforming the inmates also mm -hmm. reforming the society into accepting them because mm -hmm. we are very closed like mm -hmm. the transgenders we, we, we they, they are not us mm -hmm. it is they and us Similarly, yeah. the prisoners, they are stigmatized. True. It is always them and us. Very true. You know, yeah. so when they come out, they, they have done a mistake, they have committed a crime, whatever it is, and they are uh, serving uh, a punishment, a sentence for that. But mm -hmm. after they have, they have uh, you know, served their term, they have the right to come back to their, their uh, you know, mainstream society yeah, yeah and if the society does not uh, accept them or allow mm -hmm. them a normal mm -hmm. life then mm -hmm. we are actually pushing them back into crime mm -hmm. yeah true you know we, we are making redu people redundant mm -hmm. true so that reformation on both sides of the inmates as well as of the society to accept them Hmm. to get back to the mainstream is the idea so revival on one hand and reformation on the other hmm. hand and that's a very great initiative you're making a difference and uh, if ever i get the opportunity to come to kolkata first time meeting you then i'm uh, yeah. going on to this tram we'll be going together <laughs> yes. on this tram ride yes <laughs> Yeah, I am actually very keen to see this, you know, because uh, when I saw that tram is getting revived and that that too into a completely wonderland, I could say, so I was yeah. very happy. So thank you, thank you. So, so uh, yeah, Antra. so thank you so much, Antra, for joining us today for the one. Thank you, Mona. It was a delight actually talking to you. It was it, it doesn't uh, didn't look like an interview at all. It was a, a, a really free wheeling chat. An and absolute uh, pleasure and also great uh, discussion we had on many good things and people can watch it later also on youtube so i'm so sure. glad that you joined took out time so thank you so much Anzara. and uh, thank you so much mona and thank you so much uh, chrysanthemum chronicles for for inviting me and thank you audience for listening to me i will uh, look at uh, facebook later and if there are any queries over there i will be delighted to to answer them absolutely thank you Andrea. have a thank nice you. day thank you too <laughs> good night have a very very good night good and night. Uh, <laughs> okay. Bye. My best Thank wishes. You. My best wishes on the new logo. Okay. Thank you so much. You remain the instrumental to that also. <laughs> but that's a different we'll share later. <laughs> okay. Yes. 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 Bye. Thank you. Bye. 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 God bless. Thank you so much. So. That was Antra Banerjee with us, and we really had a great conversation on many different things and topics, particularly on her book, uh, the top, third poetry, her third poet book. Sorry, that is a poetry book. You can get that in Amazon, and uh, two of her books are fiction book. If you want to read, you can write to her. 
she can provide you with her book and also she's a great writer so it was really lovely having her and thanks to all of you who joined today for this uh, second web series and for the next web series we also have a very interesting guest that i will reveal in the page uh, soon and also uh, do check out the new website that would be getting launched on 15th of december chrysanthemum chronicles is getting a new look earlier it was pithora blogzine so it's now getting a uh, complete makeover so i hope you would join that day also so have a great evening all and a great weekend Thank you so much.